Well, good morning, everyone. Glad everyone can make it out for this exciting and historic event. Today marks a major milestone for MoDOT and one that many of us have been anticipating for a very long time. So thank you for joining us as we kick off the construction for the I-70 Ro Ro Roachport Bridge Design Build Project. My name is Brandi Baldwin and I'm the project director. So first things first, we have a few safety items we need to go over. So in case of an emergency, Nicole Garbawi will be calling 911. Nicole, please wave to the crowd. And the event anyone needs CPR today, Drew Bowman has volunteered to perform CPR with Andrew Bertels being his backup. Guys, please uh, wave to the crowd. And those three make up three quarters of my team that's helped us get this project to this point, along with Derek Lepper, the deputy project director. So I'd like to take a second and thank those guys for their hard work. Thank you guys. And we're very lucky to find ourselves here on such a beautiful day, but in the event something pops up, we can take shelter in the bistro. And finally, we're also on a very beautiful site. Let the boat get by. <laughs> a very beautiful site overlooking the bridge, but please be mindful of any slips, trips, and falls as you navigate the hillside today. As you all know, the bridge is ending, is reaching the end of its useful life. Rehabbing it would have only extended it by about 10 years and had the potential to cause three to eight hours worth of backups. This bridge carries 12 and a half million vehicles per year with 3.6 million of those being semi-trucks. Those trucks in a 48 hour period carry goods and services to the lower 48 states. These factors really drive home the importance of this project and the significance of the work that still remains. So with this project, we will be receiving two bridges, each with a hundred year life of service. These two bridges together are more than twice as wide as the existing bridge and will help improve mobility and reliability of the system. With this project, we have many safety features to help reduce crashes. Some of those include a high friction surface treatment paved with pavement sensors to help reduce weather related incidents and wet reflective pavement markers paired with a linear delineation system. That's a system of reflective signs along the barrier. Those two paired together will really help us see the lanes and the bridge itself. And probably most importantly with this project, it eliminates the need to take I-70 down to one lane now or in the future, as we can use each of these bridges to carry all of I-70 at one time. So the work that we have ahead of us today and what we are kicking off to begin is the work first on the westbound bridge that will be completed by the spring of 2023. The completion of that bridge will move all of I-70 onto that bridge and demo the ex existing bridge. Then we'll begin construction of the second structure in the, the existing structure's place and have that completed by the end of 2024. From the federal level to the local level, it's took many people to get this project to where it is today and to be a reality. Some of those people are here to speak with us today, but many others who have played a role in this massive effort have joined us to celebrate as well. And I'd like to take a minute to thank them for their contributions to this project. With Senator Roy Blunt's office, we have Sarah Graff. Ray Bozarth from Senator Josh Holloway's office. Buffy Smith from Congressman Sam Graves office. We also have many members of Missouri legislator joining us today. Representative Chuck Bays, Representative Tim Taylor, Representative Sherry Tolson Reich, Representative Chris Sander, 
Representative Peggy McGaw. Representative Steve Butts. Representative Michael Johnson. Representative Curtis Gregory. And Senator Angela Mosley. Let's take a moment to give all these folks a hand. Also with us today, we have Boone County Commissioner Janet Thompson and Justin Allred and Cooper County Commissioner Charlie Mecklersman. And from the City of Columbia, Columbia City Manager John Glasscock. We also have Mayor John Zonka from the City of Rochport. And we'd also like to thank the local property owners who have joined us today and anyone else I may have missed. And a special thank you to Rachel and Jacob Holman from Les Bourgeois Vineyards for hosting today's ceremony here at the Bistro. And now I'd like to invite Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much. What a great day and what a beautiful day. This has uh, been coming for quite a while and it is uh, wonderful to see all of this come about. You know, um, as you said, the current bridge was built in 1960. And so the people who uh, travel this area every day know the challenges that this bridge has portrayed, but also the importance of this bridge. And if we had just done the rehabilitation, it would have, as you said, only extend the life 10 years. Um, and then we would have had the three to eight hour backups. And I remember visiting with several of the uh, officials of both the county government as well as state representatives and talk about the nightmare that that would have created if we weren't able to get this funding for a brand new bridge and just had to uh, move people over into other lanes. You can just imagine the backup that that would have caused. And so it was critical that we get this funding. And I was so pleased to be able to lead the uh, effort in the House with a letter as well as uh, uh, Senator Hawley signed on to Secretary Chow making the case for please uh, supporting our infra grant. Um, it was vital and we made the case that this bridge not only uh, connects two counties, Cooper and Boone counties, but it connects two cities, St. Louis and Kansas City, with over five million citizens. At this point, this is the linchpin for that, but not just two counties or two cities, but actually the east and west coast of the United States, because we know that goods and services from all over this country uh, traverse this bridge, and it's imperative that we get that. And so I was able to help lead this letter with the Missouri delegation, all of us stood up, Republican, Democrat, we came together to say this bridge is important to our state and we need this funding. I met with Secretary Chow personally about this. And I, I want to give a special shout out uh, to Senator Roy Blunt, who on the Senate side really also helped lead the way, visiting multiple times with Secretary Chow about this. But it wasn't just the uh, congressional delegation that fought for this. It was an all-out uh, uh, partnership between every uh, elected official. We had Governor Parson leading the charge here, and I want to thank him for his leadership in getting this through and supporting this project. I want to thank the Missouri legislature who stepped up and passed a major uh, bill to allow, allow some funding. I want to thank the, the counties of of uh, Boone and Cooper who both stepped up and financially uh, have contributed and the cities of Columbia and Mayor Therese is here as well as the city of Booneville. Everybody around here understood the importance and found the funding necessary to get this passed. And so I appreciate 
appreciate everyone's work on this and it was so exciting when they made the announcement that we received the 81 Point two million dollar infrastructure for rebuilding American grant through the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which enables this two hundred and forty million dollar project to replace these four lanes and, and make six brand new lanes. So this is truly a joint effort. I'm excited about it and what this will mean for this area, uh, because as the Columbia uh, Tribune, Daily Tribune said the improvements with this project projected to reduce the number of crashes by 40% and the number of fatal crashes by 60%. And so what this means is that when parents send their kids uh, and they live on the west side of the Missouri River, they send them to Mizzou or Columbia College or Stevens College, they have better assurance that their child is going to arrive at, on campus safely. It means that the farmer in Boone County will be able to ship his goods to Kansas City easier. And it will mean the first responders will be able to get to families in need faster. This has real world practical implications and I'm excited for what this is going to mean for our state. I'm thankful for everyone's joint efforts to make this happen. I look forward to seeing this um, built and I appreciate those who are on the front line making this happen. Congratulations and God bless. Now I think it's safe to say that without the leadership and support of Governor Mike Parsons, this project would not have come to fruition. So I'd like to invite the governor now to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone to start out. What a beautiful day here in Missouri. Uh, first of all, I know Vicki's mentioned a lot of the legislators here. I want to thank you for working together to really move Missouri forward. All of you here from the House and the Senate, the local elected officials. I've, I've always said many times those are the most important elections I believe there are in the state is the local levels. And I just appreciate all of you being out here. And for the people that are not elected officials and are not politicians, Thank you for being here today, because uh, you're the heart and soul of why these projects happened here in this state. Uh, I want to thank all the dignitaries uh, up here at the front line that I'm sitting with today. Uh, Vicki mentioned the federal delegation. Uh, this project wouldn't have happened if that delegation didn't do their part. And what a partnership it's been on the local levels, the county commissioners, the mayors, all the way from the state level. And I remember going to Washington, D.C. and meeting with uh, their folks up there to try to make sure we could get the funding to do this project, to finish this project. So I can't say enough. Uh, Senator Blunt was, was a big advocate of this the whole time. Uh, I know Sam Gray's were in his chairmanship, Vicki and all the other ones that are part of it. But the thing I want to stress to you is why this happened is because it's working together. The old days of one entity doing everything themselves is over. It's all going to be about partnerships for the future, and we got to figure out how do we best use our dollars to make our state better. And the best way we can do that is when we work together from the local levels to the state level to the federal level. That's how we move the needle in this state, and I think it's proven to be able to do that. I also want to thank Patrick. Patrick's here for the job he's doing as director of MoDOT and his people and his organization he has. And I want to thank a lot of the MoDOT employees that are normally not center stage. Uh, that are out there every day doing their jobs, not getting near the credit they deserve to be out there risking their lives every day to make sure our highway and our transportation systems are safer and getting better every day in this state. So I want to thank them for, for the work they do. I don't think it's any secret the two priorities of the governor's office since I become governor is infrastructure and workforce development. I firmly believe you can't have one without the other. Every time we do a major project like this, the partnership we developed here at Rocheport Bridge also give us the ability to do the Buck O'Neill Bridge in Kansas City. It also gives us the ability to do one of the largest projects in the state at I-270 in St. Louis. It also gives us the ability in small counties all across this state to do over 300 bridges, and over 100 of them has already been done. Another 129 of them are on the books. But again, it's working together to give us the ability to expand that infrastructure in this state and why that's so important. Just a little over a week ago, two weeks ago, I was at I-49, an expansion they were doing over there in our state 
to be able to hook the four lanes to Arkansas to Missouri in southwest and northwest Arkansas with Arkansas governor. Missouri is on the right track. We have to continue to build our infrastructure in this state. And when you do build that infrastructure, it's why we are now a leader in the United States on distribution centers coming to our state. Because anybody that's in business, there's three words they'll always tell you to remember. It's called location, location, location. And the one thing Missouri has over any other state in the United States is location. We're right in the center of the United States. We have some of the best rail systems. We have some of the best road systems. We have the airports. We have the rivers. What we need to do is upgrade that and make sure we expand them and keep going so our state will keep growing. The main focus that all of us should have is, one, we want our state to do well, the economy to do well. But I'll tell you, self-serving. I want your kids and my kids and my grandkids and your grandkids to be able to stay in this state, to have the opportunity to stay here with good quality jobs, but to have to have the infrastructure in the place. That's why this bridge is so important, not only for the counties it connects, but for the entire United States is going to be passing across our state and revenue will be coming from all over the state. So it's great to be here today. Great to have a lot of success stories about transportation and it is an honor and privilege to be the 57th governor of the great state of Missouri. God bless. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Missouri Senator and Majority Floor Leader Caleb Rowden, who represents Boone and Cooper Counties. Awesome. Well, what a great day to be here. Um, welcome to the, the heart of the 19th District, right in the middle uh, of the two counties that I represent. Uh, I could echo a lot of great things, and I'll say a couple things at the end. I want to tell, tell two quick stories, one of which I think I told when we uh, were here about a year ago uh, starting, starting this process. Um, a lot of folks, probably most folks here know, but not a lot of folks in the general public probably know that this really was two things that had to happen. One had to happen at the state level, one had to happen at the federal level. Um, and when we were working to try to get this state package done that, the, that Governor Parson uh, was leading the charge on, you know, we had some issues. We had some folks who didn't, didn't like the plan. And uh, the way that we settled on it was that um, the only way that this was going to get triggered is if a certain thing happened at the federal level, which was a, a, a fairly robust amount of money. Um, and that was the way that we got some folks in the Senate sold on it. And, and I remember sitting in the President Pro Tem's office after we passed the bill. We were super excited. You know, it was the first step in a, in a multi-pronged process. And somebody walked in that didn't really entirely understand what was going on. And they said, so you're telling me if Roy Blunt and Vicki Hartzler and the rest of the crew don't, uh, don't get you $70 million, none of this is possible? And I said, yeah. And uh, they said, are you going to tell Roy that? And I said, well... Probably, I'm probably going to wait until tomorrow. <laughs> the second story, and, and they came through uh, in, 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 in great fashion. The second story, which is, is a little more personal, a little more political. Um, I remember pretty vividly when uh, the, the first story was written about, hey, the, the Rocheport Bridge, clear. we all knew it was heading towards uh, some serious issues in the end of its life. Uh, but I remember when the story came out in the Tribune and a bunch of other places that, that if we don't fix it the right way, uh, you're talking, I, I, I think it was four to eight hours, four to ten hours, you know, these crazy things that obviously made people's hair stand up. And um, I went home that night and, and um, my, I was sitting down with my wife and, and I was a little just that, that kind of had me sh shook a little bit. And uh, she said, well, what's wrong? And I said, well, we, you know, we, we got this Roachport Bridge issue that obviously is the connector uh, to, to my two counties that I represent. And this was before I got reelected uh, in 2020. And and she said, well, what's the deal? I said, well, if we don't fix this the right way, you know, my constituents are going to sit on the, sit on the highway for 10 hours um, because we didn't get our acting gear. And, and she said, uh, well, that could probably have, you know, something to do with your reelection. And I said, yeah, maybe. And uh, she said, are you sure you want to run again? I said, yeah, I, I think so. I'm pretty sure. And she said, well, you're probably going to want to fix this then. <laughs> So uh, fast forward, we, we thanks Patrick for putting the fear in God in a few people and helping me get reelected. Um, uh, that was a joke, kind of. But um, no, I, you know, you, you can stand up here and thank a lot of people. And I think the governor hit it, hit the nail on the head. Um, 
more times in politics in today's day and age, we talk about the things we disagree with. We talk about why the other guy and the other gal is, has such a bit bad view of the world. And, you know, and, and, and those are politics. And we know that in politics, you're going to do those things. But it's way more fun for me and, and these folks up on stage, some of which are Republicans, some of which are Democrats, some of them serve at the federal level, some of them serve at the local level. It's way more fun for us to stand up here and be able to do this and to say, hey, look, every once in a while, we're going to work together and we're going to put the, the, the political stuff behind us and we're going to set it aside for a week or a month or a year and, and do something that actually matters tangibly for the people of Missouri. And that's exactly what we did. And that was a product of Republicans and Democrats working together, uh, every level of government working together. Um, and, and I think the governor is right. The more we do that in today's day and age where everything is connected, uh, the better off we're going to be. And so we've got a great opportunity right here in Missouri with a tremendous delegation here at the local level and at the federal level to say, hey, we're going to bear down, we're going to work together, uh, and we're going to make this, this state and this area uh, the best place in the world to live, work, and raise a family. And this is a big part of that. Thank you, guys. God bless. It took a significant amount of effort by our local counties and communities to help make this project a reality. I would like to welcome Dan Atwell up to say a few words from Boone County Commissioner. Thank you very much. Um, this is a great day for a lot of reasons, but um, actually my comments were pre carefully prepared and already delivered in a lot of ways. <laughs> and I don't much care for repetition, so I'll spare you going over the numbers again, uh, which uh, Representative Hartzler covered in great detail and very effectively, and the cooperation part that uh, the governor commented upon, and so did Senator Rowden. I'll just add a little bit to that. Um, I think this is particularly important because it shows what can be done when people come together with a common purpose and the interest of the public in mind. And that's, this new bridge is going to show that that's what happened. And I believe that every element of the, the different community organizations that worked to get something done with this uh, did so in a way that without their help, it might not have happened. So it took all of this in the form of a, a great group. And it was, uh, it was enjoyable to watch how people maneuvered to try to make this happen. I second the idea that Senator Blunt deserves special recognition. Uh, he was here and, and there's no question in my mind that he played a pivotal role in bringing the money in from the federal government for this. But the, the city of Columbia, the county of Boone, and special recognition should go to the county of Cooper, who's represented here, because they, they ponied up at a time when uh, it mattered. And it shows, uh, what, what Senator Blunt told me was, it shows that there's local money in the game, and that helped when he went before uh, Choi, as uh, Representative Hartzler mentioned. She, uh, she also did that. So I think that the local effort on this was unprecedented and very, very helpful in making this happen. Um, I, I want to mention uh, also special honor should go to MoDOT. Uh, Patrick McKenna and his crew did something that I, I think needs to be remembered. Uh, they stood up and, and, and provided information to the public, which uh, helped coalesce the feeling about the need for this. And they did that with uh, great class and, and great detail as it went forward. So I, I really appreciate, Mr. McKenna, what you and your team did in that area. Um, I also want to congratulate the Luna Construction Organization for getting the contract. Uh, to, to, to build these bridges and welcome them to Boone County and I'm sure you'll get a welcome from Cooper County as well but uh, I think their role in this is just about to really begin we're going to be able to see what's going on but uh, some people will come here to work on this from out of state certainly out of county and we want to thank them for coming to, to Boone County to, to do this job we want to try to make them happy in their stay here. We hope they will stay forever. But uh, 
that's a really important thing. I also want to point out that I, I'm very hopeful that this effort will stimulate additional talk about the major improvement of Interstate 70 all across the state from St. Louis to Kansas City. I think doing a good job on this and showing how well Missourians can work together uh, ought to have some effect on that. So that's what I think, and I appreciate you all being here, and thank you very much. And joining us from across the river, Cooper County Presiding Commissioner Don Bargary. Thank you very much for including me in this today. Uh, this was a group effort. Uh, I think probably 95% of the people here had a hand in this. Uh, it, it was a very interesting uh, group of people that came together. From Cooper County, from day one, we looked at this as an economic development opportunity for Cooper County. Uh, being the smaller population county with the smaller cities, we still feel this is an economic development opportunity and our contribution has already been repaid. The rock you see on these dikes, that came out of Cooper County. The majority of the concrete that's going to be poured on the bridge is going to come from the Cooper County side. Uh, just last week, we announced that Kawasaki Motors was coming to Cooper County. Big deal, 280 jobs, real big deal to us. And in those negotiations with Kawasaki Motors, we pointed out that we were getting a new bridge here and it would be much easier for the workforce to commute from Columbia, who we consider a bedroom community, to Cooper <laughs> County to get to work at Kawasaki. And that, was, that clinched the deal for us. But uh, I'd like to thank the governor Congresswoman, everybody that was involved. It, it truly was a group effort. And I'd like to thank Charlie Malkersman, a fellow commissioner. And there was no question from day one that it was important to us. Thank you. This bridge has also been a focus to the city of Columbia, who sees a significant amount of traffic coming from the east daily. To say a few words, now is Columbia Mayor Brian Trace. Well, thank you. It's great to be with you this morning. What a great day for Columbia and Mid-Missouri. You know, this project really illustrates what can happen when good people, elected officials at the local, state, and federal level work together to get things done. But, you know, this type of cooperation and communication uh, shouldn't be restricted to just a bridge. It happened in our pandemic response. It happens every day in our economic development activities. And I'm so proud uh, to work with Governor Parson and, and Director McKenna. You know, when Director McKenna called and asked for a meeting and asked the City of Columbia to kick in $2 million of our uh, infrastructure dollars uh, to help pay for this bridge, Bridge. I'm, I'm not a mayor that likes to spend taxpayer dollars outside our city limits, but then you start thinking about the backlogs, you know, eight hours back to Kingdom City or to Boonville, and pretty soon that investment, uh, it was pretty clear how that was going to pay off. And as we continue to pull out of this pandemic, we are going to be grateful for those short-term, high-skill, high-wage jobs. We've got laborers and carpenters, but also iron workers and operating engineers here that are going to work on this project. They're going to live in our communities and on our economy for the next two years, and hopefully some of them stay here and begin working on the rest of the infrastructure projects that I think we can all look forward to um, over the next um, a few years with uh, Governor Parsons' leadership. Thank you for being here. This is a great day for Columbia and mid-Missouri, but it's also a great day for uh, Missouri and the country. When you think about all the raw ingredients that are coming into Columbia, Missouri, all the final exports that are leaving and being shipped across the country, all of them have to come across this bridge. Uh, whatever you buy in a grocery store, chances are it was delivered by a truck that crossed this bridge to get there. Uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for your cooperation. And thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Now I'd like to invite the director of MoDOT, Patrick McKenna, to say a few words. Thanks, Brandy. You know, the, uh, the best and worst thing about going last 
is that everything's been said, right? So, so these uh, 17 pages that, that we had prepared, because MoDOT likes to be prepared, I'm just going to set those right aside. Uh, you know, one of the things I'd like to do first is, is just recognize a few more people. I see Dave Simmons uh, out there. Dave, if you could raise your hand. Dave coordinates design build projects for MoDOT all over the state. Uh, and every time we do one of these projects, we learn from it. And Dave makes sure that we incorporate all the innovation that we get from these projects and we reincorporate those into the next one. Driving that innovation uh, and getting projects of this magnitude done, uh, Dave has a big hand in that and I'd, I'd like to recognize him for his efforts. Also see our, our chief engineer, uh, Ed Hassinger, is uh, with us today and you know, Ed's been with the department for just a few years now, right, Ed? Um, uh, but I, I tell you what, I'd, I'd say there's nobody at MoDOT that is, that is more responsible for developing the culture of innovation that we benefit from today. Uh, he has worked all over the state and trained our engineers and people have learned from his guidance and wisdom uh, for decades. Uh, and and he's, been a, he's been a continual partner of mine and uh, I appreciate his efforts every day. Uh, even when he's telling me what I'm doing wrong, uh, which is those are the most important days because what I've learned is to listen to Ed uh, because we come out with a better uh, result. So Ed, thank you for your efforts. I see Brian Hartnagel. Uh, he's just recently minted as our, as our statewide uh, bridge engineer. That is one of the most difficult jobs in the state. Uh, he lives, breathes, and thinks about 10,400 state-owned bridges and another 14,000 local bridges. He and his team uh, keep Missourians safe. Uh, they've done this for decades with limited resources. Um, and uh, I tell you, we've got a just-in-time bridge program for major bridges, and this one is just in the nick of time. Uh, thank you, Brian, for your efforts. And. And I saw Michelle Watkins, who's our district engineer uh, from the Central District. Uh, Michelle has run our planning division for over a decade and then, then took the role uh, in, in the Central District. Uh, she's been a champion of this project the entire time she's been at MoDOT. Uh, her leadership in the Central District is, is unrivaled, and I want to thank Michelle for being here as well. You know, we also have a couple members of the uh, Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission. We have uh, Commissioner Greg, Greg Smith uh, is with us and Dustin Boatwright. Uh, you know, the, I'd, I'd like to thank them for their leadership. You know, the commission came to me several years ago and they said, let's get going. Uh, let's get some things on the books and let's get it rolling. And so I brought them a plan uh, for the Roachport Bridge. And I said, here's the plan in a nutshell. We're hanging by a thread and we need to throw a Hail Mary. And they said, that's your plan? I said, yeah, that's the plan. I think it's gonna work. Uh, so what, what we did is we, we really studied the infra grant at the federal level. We worked with local partners. We worked all the way through um, up to Congress uh, and we focused on this bridge because uh, quite frankly here today, I believe the, the um, the move on this bridge is the single inflection point. It's the turning point in Missouri for infrastructure. You know, before we had the ability financially to get this bridge done, everything seemed like it was getting in worse shape. You know, ever since we've been able to put the financial plan in place for this, and I tell you, you've heard it, the partnership at the local level. And, and Mayor Treese just said to me, you know, you should have asked uh, Cooper County for more money after hearing what they're going to benefit from this. And, uh, and what was the response? You did. I did, right? So, <laughs> so uh, we, we knew, working with our congressional delegation, we knew how important the local, the local engagement and financial support was. That was a, that was a key factor. Uh, that enabled uh, Senator Blunt, Congressman Hartzler, Congressman Graves, Senator Hawley, uh, and the whole delegation to bring forward with strength of conviction that the local area was involved in this. They were putting their financial resources in place. You know, to get uh, a city that's in proximity, but not in, to get $2 million from Columbia for this project is, is just 
astounding. It's unusual, but it shows you the leadership that exists in Colombia. Uh, it's that type of leadership at the local level all the way through. And to have a governor, Governor Parson, who trusted in the process, but also came forward with the notion that even with a failure of Proposition D for additional revenue, he brought me into his office shortly after and said, you know, now what? Because we have to make progress here. And I tell you, the incremental progress that came out of his focus on bridge program and the, the connection to the infra grant that made this possible, that incremental progress, I believe, is what set the table for SB 262 for the, for the General Assembly to work together across party lines to get that done. You know, we couple that with what we hope to be um, additional resources coming from the federal uh, infrastructure bill that uh, as, as much as I um, appreciate everybody being here, I want to thank the members of Congress who are also in Washington working hard on that bill. We need that here in Missouri. Those resources combined with SB 262 are really that turning point. We will have with those two things combined, the largest capital infrastructure program over the next five years in Missouri history. And it's all because of the leadership, starting with Cooper County, all the way through the governor of Missouri and our federal delegation. Uh, I wanna thank everybody for being here. I thank everybody for your support. This is a great day for Missouri, and I'm just honored to be a part of it. Thank you. It's not going to cooperate with me. Um, so now we're to our ceremonial part. Um, a ceremonial groundbreaking, usually you see buckets of dirt and shovels. We're going to start a new tradition here today on the Rocheport Bridge project and do the ceremonial turning of the bolts on our beam here. So I, I welcome Congresswoman Hartzler, Governor Parsons, Senator Rowden, and Director McKenna to join me in turning the bolts. <laughs> okay, have at it, turn turn the bolts. Oh. Yep, reset them and we can do another round. Well, that uh, concludes our ceremony. If anybody else would like to have their picture taken with the beam and, and tightening the bolts, our communication staff will be around today to take your pictures and they'll share a link with you to that picture. Um, we'll also have many of our speakers and local representatives to uh, visit with any of you from the media along the path. And thank you all for coming to today's event. But please remember to buckle up, put your phone down, and drive safe. Thank you. <laughs>